Welcome to our second installment on clarinet fingerings. Uh, now in the first video, if you haven't seen that, I'd recommend that you do. In the first video, we talked a lot about the philosophy of fingerings, uh, how to think about fingerings, uh, how to judge fingerings, and, and, and um, the idea of a standard, a conceptual standard, by which we judge the success or the failure of a particular fingering in its context, in context of use. Now, in this particular video, we're going to be talking about something quite different, um, and that is specific fingerings, okay? So we're going to go from the general to the specific. Now, these pitches are often problematic because they're hard to play softly. Uh, as short pipe notes, often it's very hard to slur conventionally from a long pipe note, say, like a clarion D or a clarion C uh, up to an A or a B without undertoning or without having the high notes, you know, stick out. And conversely, it's hard to slur down from those high notes down to the long pipe notes because you get hesitations in response and different colors because of the different inherent resistances between long pipe and short pipe notes. Well, there are some little known fingerings that enable you to derive uh, those notes at the top of the clarion staff, the, the ABC, off actually long pipe combinations, and they come off of overtones. Uh, let me present the three that we're going to be talking about in this particular video now. The first fingering is A. It looks like you're just playing G with the side E flat key open, which is the actually G to A trill key. The next fingering is B natural above the staff, and that's fingered like D, again with that E flat key, that E flat, B flat side key open. And that gives you B. And the next note is high C, and that looks like you're playing E flat on the uh, clarion staff, but again with the E flat, B flat side key open. You might be asking, well, where do these notes come from in the upper clarion? Well, they come from fundamentals. Notice in these overtones we have low G. When we press the register key down, of course, we get the 12th, which is the, really the fifth above the G, and D, that's D. And then when we split the tube once again by venting the E flat, B flat side trill key, we get B natural. And then we can also do the same thing on low A flat. Low A flat, press the register key down, we get E flat, then vent the side trill key, and that splits the tube once again and gives us the third, which is C above the staff. You might be asking, okay, well, those are the fingerings, but just how do these notes really sound? Are they really worth my time? Take a listen. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Now let's listen to several passages, many of which I'm sure will be familiar to most of you, and see how these fingerings work in the actual heat of battle.
Here's another passage from Rose, this time showing off how that long B natural sounds in a leap from D on the staff. Here's another I'm sure almost all of you are familiar with. Well, as you could hear, many of those passages are passages from very familiar pieces of literature. But they've been fingered in a way that are quite f unfamiliar to you because we are using those long pipe notes. Now, the next thing to do with those would be for you as a clarinetist to experiment with them. Experiment, first of all, with the different feel that they give in terms of resistance to your air and embouchure, and to practice slow intervals and slow connections, getting used to the combinations until you can effectively execute them just in a digital sense in coordination with your air. And I think you'll find then, if you apply those to a lot of the literature that you're already playing, that you're going to um, have some very positive experience, experiences. Uh, with these three fingerings, I've uh, refingered a lot of the standard literature and it's a lot more secure. Those passages that were, say, difficult to control, passages that were iffy, passages that were of a concern in terms of undertoning and not responding or not matching in color, or just not being able to get the beautiful musical effect that I wanted, uh, those have essentially, those problems have essentially disappeared or they've been minimized to, um, to a very small extent, so I feel quite secure and in control of passages, whereas before I was a little bit, well, I was always concerned about. And that concern about response and about evenness and color will take away from the musical effect, from the beauty, from the spontaneity uh, that you really want in your music making. And it'll also take away from the elegance of your phrasing. Even if you make the interval, it still won't be as elegant and beautiful as you would like or the listener would like. So these fingerings will help you. If you work with them, they will work for you. This information and more can be found in Tom Rudinar's book, Clarinet Fingerings, A Guide for the Performer and Educator. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>